Hi everyone, we want to welcome you to today's webinar, Elevating drive Through Designs. I'm Nicole Poole, Vice President of Hospitality and Entertainment here at HFA. We're a team of about 25 people. We work on a variety of project types from QSRs to large entertainment complexes. I've been here about two and a half years, um, but with over 18 years in the hospitality industry. So today we've got Stephen Baker here with us. He's one of our very talented team leads. Hello everyone. As Nicole said, I'm Stephen Baker. I'm an architect and team lead here at HFA. Uh, I lead a very talented team of designers that work with our national restaurant brands. I've worked with one of the largest and fastest growing and I think most innovative QSR brands for the last five years. The last couple years, I've worked with the client's design team to reimagine and redevelop their portfolio in light of fast emerging consumer and technology trends. In the last 18 months, my team has redesigned over 100 restaurants nationwide. Many of those remodels implement the drive through trends we'll talk about today. So just a quick background on HFA before we get started here. Um, we are an A&E firm. Uh, we specialize in multiple types of sectors. We have 375 plus people across four offices in two countries. Uh, we've been in business for over 30 years. Uh, these are just a few of the disciplines we represent in-house. So Stephen's going to talk about our three uh, key takeaways today. Yeah, today we're going to discuss our approach, uh, design approach with a restaurant clients and then go through some trends that are elevating drive through design. These trends started four or five years ago, but significantly accelerated as restaurants adapted during and after the pandemic in 2020. The drive through at the QSR mostly stayed the same since its inception in 1947. Sure, we added some new tech and updated some equipment, but the overall function of pulling up, telling someone your order, then going to the window to pay and get your meal was pretty standard for decades. As drive through business accelerated up to 70%, we had to rethink what we've always done. We had to innovate, and quick service's biggest category is hardly recognizable. So the three key takeaways today will be understand your patrons, the role that patron profiles play in properly balancing your drive through innovation, uh, embrace creative solutions. What are the opportun opportunities related to drive through and mobile ordering at each specific restaurant. And third, innovate and test for the future. What's next in QSR and the drive through experience? There's also a QR code on the screen that you see. It takes, to, takes you to some great HFA resources, so feel free to check that out. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is really our matchstick concept service. Um, this is how our process starts for design. We have a simple mission of bringing storytelling to life through the built environment. Um, so today, we're gonna just talk about that four-step process and what that looks like. So our first step in doing that is to understand our client's identity. We wanna be immersed in their culture. We're gonna read their brand book. We'll absorb all of their statistics. You know, some of the clients that we work with are just starting to create their concepts while others are very well-developed brands. For those well-developed brands, we'll explore their current built environments, listen to their future growth plans. This is all part of that first step. We will also create um, an interview with key stakeholders um, to dive into those patrons and their brand. So we really have a crafted a series of questions that are meant to explore what key program features the different demographics might be drawn to to help elevate the overall design. The second step in our process is we want to know what their patrons value. So what is it about your brand that people love? What's working? What's not working? What are some of the demographics you want to reach? And who are you currently reaching? These are just some of the types of typical questions we might ask in that interview. After it's done, we will basically create what we call patron profiles for the design. And this would be a day in the life of what it might look like. So the last two steps in our four step process is to create a narrative tailored to our client's interest. We'll learn the who because they influence the story. We'll learn the what because that sets the operations. 
and we'll learn the when that sets the tone. And then the last piece is to transform that story to the built environment. We'll collaborate to create the program, design layouts that keep flow and operations in mind. So let's go back to that second step for a moment. We want to talk about how we studied patrons for this drive-through experience. Really, it's, it's two different ways. We may look at an individual patron or a group of patrons. And for the drive-through, we decided that a group of patrons might be the best approach. So our first group, we're going to call them the digital nomads. You may be wondering, what's a digital nomad? Well, for us, digital nomads are drivers who are fulfilling third-party orders. They may use the drive-through for a pickup or go to a dedicated spot on the site. It's part of why we're seeing clients have the auto sliding doors so that someone can come across a lane of traffic to quickly get to one of those dedicated spots. We'll also see these dedicated spots for a quick entrance into the restaurant with a designated area for pickup. So our second group of patrons, they're gonna be our loyalists. These are individuals who have already downloaded apps to their favorite spots and they use it for points. When they head out the door, they're know, they know where they're gonna go. So we may create a dedicated pickup line would be an approach we might take for design with a group of loyalists. And our third group, there are potentialists. I personally probably fit in this category the best because when I head out of the office for lunch, I have no idea where I'm gonna go. I just want something that sounds good, will be easy to get in and out. Um, so I may just pop in to anywhere I see. Potentialists typically will take a traditional approach to a drive-through, but we wanna make sure that that lane doesn't feel overcrowded. Uh, it's easy to maneuver and it feels inviting for them to stop in. So after developing the three profiles, the group profiles really, we would actually create a day in the life of and we would use this to map out the program for the design. For a lot of architects, we just call this programming. So Stephen, I have to know, which of the three do you fit into? Oh gosh, I'm definitely a potentialist as well. I don't have any apps. I rarely know where I'm going when I go to get something to eat. And I just pull into what's close and what I think is gonna be fast. So, yeah. potentialist 100%. So, you know, I really, really love this matchstick approach, and I think we have some great profiles. So now let's talk through some trends that uh, support those different patrons. Our first trend is mobile ordering. I'm sorry, upstream ordering. The reason for upstream ordering is twofold. First, if your ticket times grow a little during peak hours and the timing from your order point to the window is too close, let's get those tickets in sooner. Second, if we pair upstream order with other trends, we can significantly increase your peak capacity. With these solutions implemented correctly, I've seen restaurants go from 180 to 200 cars in peak hours. There's a lot more to consider here than just throwing a team member out there with an iPad. We want that team member to be safe. Uh, our civil engineering teams can really help design, say, design your sites with that safety in mind. I often tell clients to take the old nine foot drive lane and throw it out the window. We need to give space for team members to operate safely alongside cars. So defining that team member area is essential. The positive effect of upstream order taking is more personable, intentional interactions between employees and patrons. The latest drive-through study reported 45% of, cus of customers dislike hearing an automated voice when ordering. So keep it personal. Rather than feel like they're talking at someone, guests can interact with employees face to face. This service model might be what turns a potentialist into a loyalist, and is probably what keeps those loyalists coming back. I love the upstream ordering because it keeps traffic moving, right? It's, I could see that really attracting potentialists that are driving by. So, they see how quickly like wait times are moving, right? Whenever, um, and it becomes a more attractive option, I think, overall. Yeah, so upstream ordering is a little bit of a trick to the, to the patron. Uh, some of the chains that implement this have 
longer drive through overall drive through wait times, uh, but they have higher customer satisfaction. And so it's really that extra interaction, if it's a positive interaction, really helps to break up that wait so you just don't realize it. You know, that makes a lot of sense. So our next trend is site canopies. For a long time, restaurants had a small canopy at the order point, like the image uh, on the slide. Uh, but let's be honest, what did that ever really accomplish? So the, the point here is to incorporate larger canopies. Uh, they provide much needed coverage for guests and employees that are out in the sun or rain, heat, snow, whatever elements. You can outfit the canopies with heaters and fans to create a better working experience for team members if they are outside interacting with guests. Adding canopies requires a lot of coordination and collaboration between our architectural, civil, and MEP engineering teams. The canopies can be anywhere from $25,000 to $250,000, depending on the size and systems included. Only some restaurants are ready for that type of investment. Clients like Chick-fil-A have doubled down on this trend for years. Chick-fil-A pairs canopies with an upstream order taking and a meal delivery service model. When I say meal delivery service model, I mean taking the meals out to cars. Think car hops bringing your order out to the car window. And per a 2022 drive through study, 30% of customers would like to see more car hops in the future. So reacting to these trends could be the way to gain more loyalist patrons. Maybe we should bring music back. I love that, you know, underneath the canopies playing some music, it gives that car hop vibe. Yeah, it does. And you know, let's be honest, we're all jamming out anyway, yeah, so we could right. do it together. <laughs> um, our third trend is automatic drive-through doors. This is a great way to implement that meal delivery service model. Drive-through doors replace the window and offer a completely different service model option. Quick note, I know of two manufacturers that, ma that have these doors. I've worked closely with both for the last three to four years to develop different versions of those doors. You can get a door with sliding outer panels, um, swinging exterior panels, half panels, C-shape, all kinds of operations for how we really get a, a door and window operation for you. Now back to the service model of the drive through door. The first and most common benefit is to pull a car forward ahead of the window, then come out and deliver food. If that order takes a little too long, you can pull the car forward so you don't back up the drive through line. You may also pull cars forward to get more in the queue and increase that peak hour throughput. Once meals are ready, team members can simultaneously bring food out to multiple, uh, multiple vehicles. If you plan to do this, let's work with our civil engineering team and make sure you have a bypass lane to keep cars moving. Other service models and sales channels we can support with the drive through door uh, on the right site layout are curbside meal delivery for your mobile app orders, uh, catering, or self-delivery. You probably have dedicated spots somewhere on site that support curbside. The benefit of the drive through door is you no longer walk through the front of house to access those spots. You now have direct access from back of house. To recap drive through doors before we move on, uh, there's multiple types. You can increase your drive through capacity and support other sales channels. The drive through door is one trend of the four we'll talk about that's a serious game changer for your operations. This is the trend I was talking about in the beginning when I mentioned increasing capacity from 180 to 200 cars per hour. The door is the single feature the QSR brand I work with will install at every restaurant nationwide. I have to say, I was really blown away the first time I saw these drive through doors. So tell me what challenges has your team seen when you guys <laughs> have gone to install these? Um, there's, there's a couple challenges. Um, I'd say the two largest challenges we've seen are probably health departments. Um, some health departments really don't like these doors, uh, especially in California. Um, and the other thing is probably HVAC design. Um, you, you think about it when you create this much larger opening, you've got to deal with all that extra air infiltration. Yeah. Um, 
So we, we work closely with our engineering teams and kind of solve that and make sure we have the right HVAC in place. Um, you know, I'll say our teams have gained a lot of experience with these doors over the last 18 months. And I think we've figured out what it takes to get them uh, pretty much anywhere in the country. Uh, so our fourth trend is mobile ordering. I briefly mentioned this as a sales channel supported by the drive through door. Now let's dive in and discuss what makes mobile order pickup successful. Uh, I know the brands I work with started mobile apps before the pandemic, but they were a very small portion of sales. Today, mobile ordering is a much more prominent channel, and we've implemented several solutions inside the restaurant to support that pickup. If you'd like to chat about those and how we've reinvented QSRs, please reach out after the webinar. Today, we're gonna to talk about how to support mobile order pickup in the drive-through. These are solutions for the digital nomads picking up an order for delivery or for your loyalists who've ordered ahead uh, in the app and now they're intentionally in the drive-through. I know several chains we work with need help figuring this out. Since dining rooms reopened, we've seen more challenges with curbside mobile pickup. Uh, many sites no longer have those dedicated spaces or folks that are going inside to dine are parking in those spots. So you can have a guest pull into the drive through with everyone else. Uh, maybe they scan a QR code to let you know they've arrived. Um, maybe the site's geofenced so it automatically knows that they're on site. Some brands you just pull up to the order point and say, hey, I'm here for my order. Any way you support this approach, pulling those mobile order pickups into the drive lane can cause two problems. First, it can throw off the timing. That car is taking up a spot that you're not working to fulfill. Uh, so now, when they come to the window, they get their meal, which is likely already prepared, you aren't taking payment, uh, you aren't making the drink, they pull away faster, so your time's off for the next car. It may seem like a minor deal, but if you get three orders in a row, it could throw things off by a couple minutes, which is maybe half your metric. The other side of this coin is if your mobile guest comes into a drive through that's backed up, they finally get to the window, but they've lost all convenience of ordering ahead. Maybe their fries are even cold, and so now they're really not happy. So what's the solution? Uh, several brands implement dedicated lanes for order pickup, so you don't get backed up. The example you see on this slide are Taco Bell and Chick-fil-A. Uh, you know, many others including Chipotle and Shake Shack, uh, Schlotzky's, Burger King, probably any brand out there is trying some version of mobile pickup. Uh, adding a second lane dedicated for that pickup can be a real challenge for existing buildings. We may not have room around the site to do that. And even on new locations, it can take a significantly larger site to develop. So I'll say the best compromise I've seen for small existing sites or even small new sites is relocating parking spaces to the drive-through side of the restaurant. And then you pair mobile orders with that drive-through door. Your team members can easily see that cars have arrived, they're in a spot, and you have direct access. So like I said before, you don't have team members going through the front of house. The benefit for the dig digital nomad or your loyalists is they don't get stuck in the drive through with all those potentialists. The design approach to mobile order blurs the lines a little between drive through and pickup, uh, you know, drive through supporting potentialists, uh, people aimlessly driving around decided to pull into your restaurant <clears throat> and pick up more supports digital nomads, those third party drivers or loyalists that order ahead who are intentionally on site and ready to dine with you. So to recap our four trends of drive through, we discussed upstream ordering, site canopies, automatic drive through doors and mobile ordering. So this was just a quick touch on each of these topics. We hope it sparked some thoughts that you can have on how to innovate your operation or your drive-through. Um, the last thing we're gonna talk about though, of course, is one of my favorite discussions is to talk about the future and the future of drive-throughs. So anyone who's been keeping up with restaurant news probably saw that Chick-fil-A recently announced a two-story drive-through concept 
We also saw that Taco Bell announced an all new drive through concept that's two stories last summer. But I think probably Burger King might have been the first one to the table in the summer of 2020 mm -hmm. um, with this concept idea. So I kind of want to know, what do you think about them, Stephen? Um, yeah, so these locations, you know, they all elevate the kitchen to the second level. Um, there's multiple lanes under the building. Uh, I'd say there's a lot of new food transportation tech that goes into those buildings to get the meals to the patrons. Um, these examples really uh, support digital nomads. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, you know, they have those dedicated lanes, so they're not getting stuck with the potentialists. But we can still have those potentialists just pulling in and, and ordering and quickly get their food to them. Um, one other distinguishing factor, I'd say, between Chick-fil-A's and the other examples we, we mentioned are um, Chick-fil-A is still doing that kind of meal delivery. They they're still have people on the ground floor that bring the meal out to mm -hmm. the car. Um, the uh, Taco Bell uses a kind of elevator in a tube, Think kind of like the bank tubes. Your oh, food yeah. just kind of comes down to you. Um, and then I, I think McDonald's has tested a location um, in Texas where it's a conveyor that brings the food out to you. So again, that's probably a huge difference in all those examples is how are we actually interacting with patrons and, and, uh, and then again, we're, what, who are we supporting? Digital nomads or potentialists? So I don't think we can really talk about the future without talking about AI, right? Um, and how that might influence future solutions. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we've we've seen uh, McDonald's has piloted AI technology um, several several locations. Uh, maybe a year or two ago, um, they're still kind of testing for a rollout. Um, they have a restaurant in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, that uses uh, some integrated app uh, technology to um, help the restaurant know when to prepare a meal and it's ready when they're on site. My guess is some sort of geofencing technology. Um, well, I mean, that's interesting that you say that because we do see AI creating dynamic menus as well, right? To help team members identify patrons. Mm -hmm. So we can have tech on site that reads a license plate number and on the screen it pulls up, hey, this is Stephen Baker. 80% of the time he orders a nitro, <laughs> nitro cold brew. Sometimes he gets a cake pop, <laughs> right? Um, but now, actually, a team member can like personally welcome you on site. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. We're, we are seeing technology use that data to help sell, and um, they know I'm guilty of the cake pop every right. once in a while, <laughs> and they can try to sell it to me today. So. <laughs> So some of these future innovations are tech, and you know tech is not our expertise, but we love to see how it can evolve the overall design of a project and just our thought process there. So, but what we can really do is work through your patron profiles, you know, understand who they are, how they're using the restaurant, and that influences our overall approach. So we could implement pickup lanes for our digital nomads, design points of intentional interaction with our loyalists, or we could help with you know, a holistic approach that gives your potentialist a great experience every time they come on site. So we just wanna thank you guys so much for joining us today. We're gonna to open it up to Q&A um, right now to see if you guys have any questions for us. Now, let's see what I can. Pull up here. All right. As space becomes more and more of a commodity, how are sites addressing safety and flow in especially high traffic areas? You know, that's a great question. Um, like I mentioned, when we're doing that um, upstream order taking, we really do have to consider a larger drive lanes. You know, a lot of times we're looking at something like uh, 11 or 12 feet uh, for each drive lane over nine feet. Um, and it, it does, it just, it takes up a lot more space. Um, you're talking about maybe adding a dedicated lane for mobile order pickup. Mm -hmm. There's another, you know, maybe nine or 12 feet we need. Um, and then, uh, yeah, it, it's just, it is changing the site sizes. So ho yeah. hopefully that answered the question there. All right. Let's see, what's another one? Um, 
drive through doors. Drive -through what doors. type of safety features do they have? Mainly situations regarding rowdy customers. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, wow. um, <clears throat> so a lot of times those doors um, are set to automatically close. Um, that's actually a health department requirement. Um, the, they, they have an automatic closing feature. Um, and then to reopen those, uh, those doors, a lot of times on the exterior, I think our clients are doing like a key fob or a keypad or something like that. So we, we don't lose that security um, with that door, any, any, at least any more than we would with a window. And there's usually several people outside the door, right? I mean, yeah. especially for Chick-fil-A. <laughs> yeah. They were one of the first to really implement it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um, so let's see here, we've got another one. Um, we don't have a drive-through, but we do have lots of curbside customers. What design trends are you seeing for pickup? So that's a great question, because mm -hmm. I think that really ties into our digital nomads who you know, are really fulfilling third-party orders, because yep. they are definitely doing a lot of pickup, so. Absolutely. Um, for those customers, I would say the, the um, at the end, we're talking about you can do the dedicated lanes. Mm -hmm. um, if we don't have the site constraints, like one of the earlier questions, how do we deal with these larger sites? If we can just dedicate a couple of, of spots, um, hopefully on the drive-through side of the building, and then pair that with a drive-through door. Um, I'll, I'll also say it doesn't have to be paired with the drive-through door. Certainly has benefits like that direct access from back of house, uh, but there are a lot of chains that they've hold customers ahead to that side. They have maybe just a swinging door. It doesn't have to be the automatic door to be able to bring that meal out. So I'd say that's really the, the uh, trend we're seeing to address those, uh, those customers. That makes sense. Well, it seems like somebody is interested <laughs> in explaining how geofencing works. <laughs> I don't yeah. know that um, I'm the right person to talk about geofencing and the technology around that, but maybe you have some more I, insights from talking to those groups. You know, I definitely don't know all the ins and outs of it, um, but just that it, it integrates with the app. It uses lo location services on your phone. Um, so that's a big trick. You know, some people don't want to share their location. Well, then they're not going to know. They might when, not know that you need a cake yeah. pop. <laughs> you don't want to share it. <laughs> yeah, they they may not know when you're when you're there when your order's ready. But if you have your location sharing on and it's integrated into the app, then there's yeah I don't know how they set that fence, yeah. but it's it's set. It knows the extents of the site and can tell how far you are from it and and help time that uh, time that order. And most of the loyalists are going to have the app on their phone, so that makes sense for them. It would yep. be like people like us, the potentialists, yeah. who, you know, they We're might not always know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Next up, uh, what strategies do you recommend to help retain drive through guests that see a long line and drive away discourage lost customers? Yeah, I actually... One of the things that you said earlier about upstream ordering really appeals to me, right? I think it's that customer interaction, knowing mm -hmm. that they're not waiting 10 minutes to have yep. someone talk to them, mm -hmm. I think is like a great strategy um, for those long lines. Absolutely. You know, upstream ordering, it does, um, like I said earlier, it, it may not um, uh, change the overall process that much. It right. may still be a longer process, but you're having those interactions. Um, and it does give you an opportunity. It can increase a little bit, increase your, your throughput, your capacity, your speed um, to take those orders. Uh, I, I will say a really critical part of that I maybe didn't mention before is you need to be able to take payment at that point. Oh, right. Because um, if you still have to pay when you get to the window, then we, we lose some of that benefit. So it's, it's really taking the order and taking payment. Um, so then they're just driving around and getting their order at the, as a second step. That makes sense. Seen. Have you seen a shift in the layout in, of interior spaces that thanks to surges in digital ordering and drive-through tech? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I'd say interior spaces, there's, um, well, several shifts, even, even the um, elevated buildings that we saw earlier. Yeah. Those are examples where we've completely changed our approach and are really drive-through only, so we don't have dining rooms anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, those may be the kind of extreme versions of a drive-through only, but we've seen a lot of chains developing that uh, drive-through focus, um, less dining, and um, 
and then even in existing restaurants, we're, we're seeing a kind of shift in the, the spaces inside, uh, more space to support drive-through, dedicate, dedicated spaces to support those order pickups. There's, there's a lot of a changes lot of inside the restaurant. Um, a little plug, I wrote a blog article about uh, reinventing QSRs, and um, hopefully, it's, uh, I think it's one of the links uh, at the, on the QR code at the end of the webinar today. So you can go check that out and read some more about uh, changes we're seeing inside yeah, the restaurant. That's a, that's a great idea. You know, I think one other interesting thing, too, that we've seen is even the thought of ghost kitchens coming up, where they're drive through pickup only, right? Mm -hmm. It's a pretty interesting concept that's out there. So we'll Absolutely. see how that evolves. Let's see. So I think that Let's that see. may be, did we miss any in here? I don't, I think that's all. I think so too. All right. Okay. Well, thank you everyone uh, for joining us today. Again, these are just, you know, some of the innovations, um, some of the trends we're seeing in uh, elevating drive through design. We really appreciate the questions um, course, and, yeah. and the opportunity to discuss a little further. If you have more questions after the webinar, please feel free to reach out, contact us, um, check out the articles and the, the links through that QR code. Uh, and just a last reminder, there are three key takeaways today were understand your patrons, embrace creative solutions, and innovate and test for the future. And we will have a handout too that uh, talks about our patron profiles and gives you that process. So it's a great little tool to use um, as a guide. All right, thanks Thank everyone. Thank you all, have a great day.